Well, good evening. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for EdChat Interactive. I'll be hosting tonight. And tonight we have Monica Burns, uh, who's going to be talking about the shift from consumption to creation, or I should say, who's going to be leading a discussion from consumption to creation. Uh, because uh, let me go on to my next intro slide for a minute. Uh, because here at EdChat Interactive, what we are trying to do is to offer online sessions different from the way webinars work, encourage interaction. So we're going to have times for you to work together to, to solve questions. We're going to ask you some questions and ask you to either text your answers or, or, or come up on stage and discuss them with Monica. And we think that that, that format is a lot closer in the, in the classroom, the way, the, the way we interact with our students. Now, the way we do that, is through a platform called Shindig, which is a little bit different from platforms that you've probably seen before. So I want to go through a few of the of the features of Shindig, of which is for text chat. So I'd like you to click on that text chat button now, and what you'll get is a screen if you if you drag it from the from the top, and you can move it around the, the screen, or you can close it uh, by clicking the X. But what I'd like you to do now is in that, uh, while it's open, in that box in the bottom, why don't you just uh, type in your name or, or what your role is in education. And that, that's going to give Monica a better idea of who you are and what you want to learn. Um, I will say that the one person who does not see that is me. So I'm hoping that you're typing in text, um, but I don't see if you. So the, the, the second of the avatars uh, or the icons underneath your, your video avatar is the ask question or the question mark. Um, that allows you to ask a question and it goes to me. Uh, I can then pass it's a technical question. You can ask it to me. And if we have uh, over about 20, 25 people, um, you know, you may not be in Monica's room at the time. Uh, so you can ask a question of me and I can always pass it to Monica. Uh, and then the third icon is raise hand. There's going to be times during the session we're going to say, well, we'd like somebody to come up on stage. Or we could be talking about something and you think gee you know something i have a comment and if you have a comment and you'd like to come up on stage and discuss it with monica click on the raise hand button and then we can bring you up on stage and you can discuss whatever your concerns are or your example is or your question is or whatever you want to say um you can discuss that in, you know directly with, with monica. there's also phone, so if you're getting some feedback coming through your machine uh you can always mute the microphone uh temporarily and then and then unmute, unmute it later on so those are the, the most important items on the menu. Um, there's, there's another capability of Shindig that, uh, that we're going to be using tonight. When you click on the avatar of another person, you're going to be paired with that other person. And then you can have a private conversation with, with him or her. Um, you know, and, and we're going to use that to break people into small groups at different sessions. So right now... Um, why don't you click on the avatar of another person and I'll, I'll, I'll shrink this to let you see the other people. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the other person or introduce yourselves to each other? And why don't you each talk about what you hope to learn? Uh, you all can talk about this with her, but I'm going to give you about two minutes, uh, to please click on the avatar. I see a couple of you are doing this now and I'm going to bring myself down and I'll come back up in another minute or so. So it's a fun conversation. You get to find out what some other people from around the country or from different places around the world are, are doing in education. And we'll be doing that a few more times during the course of the evening. Um, and uh, I, I, I hope you enjoy it. That tomorrow night, we're having another really interesting discussion with Scott McLeod. Uh, are your children's classes dangery, dangerously irrelevant? Uh, he's always a little controversial. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Um, and incredible uh, uh, conversation. And since you all got here, you know, you just go to www.edchatinteractive.org and then you can click on upcoming web events and, uh, and join that discussion. Um, and you should also know that, you know, Monica is the featured speaker at FETC three or four times at FETC. So, um, 
you know, feel free to go to FETC. If you do register or if you are already registered, you can uh, you can hear. Her. If you haven't registered yet, you can use the code um, EC1212 uh, to register for it with a discount. Um, you will probably know Monica from her uh, website and her speaking, her website, Class Tech Tips. And let me find her and uh, bring her up on stage now. All and right. there she is. Great. Well, welcome to EdShed Interactive. Thank you so much. I am really excited to be here with you all and just, you know, honored for the invitation. And of course, you know, looking forward to all we know it really right. um, just about a month or so away um, in January where I am speaking at a few different presentations. I think we have four slots um, that I'll be at FETC uh, this year. But tonight we're really going to focus on this shift consumption to creation, which is a topic that I'm really passionate about, that I'm glad to have some time to speak to you all today. And more importantly than my kind of going through this um, opportunity that we have together today and talk about how these big ideas really connect to your experiences, the goals that you have um, for the second half of the school year or the beginning of the school year, depending on where you're and so this idea of discussing the shift from consumption to creation, but I really hope as I go through and, and share some stories and some ideas that your wheels are really spinning about the applications to your particular um, learning environment. So if we move forward to the slide, you'll see at the very top is a link for um, our our talk today. So my website, classtechtips.com is where I blog and share and I'll tell more about my stories um, as we move through. But there's a special page up there today. So if you go to select, I am going to do of my new book, Tasks Before App. So it's available on Amazon, just like all the others. Um, but I have a copy uh, right here next to me on my desk that I'll mail out uh, to someone who uh, joins us live today, who puts their info in on that Google form. And of course, if you want some extra resources, some of the kind of creation pieces that I'll chat about today, I'll, I'll make sure to send that out to everyone who fills out in and puts in their info there too. And my email there, monica at classtechtips.com, of course, you know, is where you can reach me beyond <laughs> our work. Today. And if you are tweeting or or sharing, of course, with hashtag or FETC's hashtag, um, you're more than welcome to include my Twitter handle as well, which is Class Tech Tips. So if we move forward to the next slide, this is one of my favorite pictures I always like to share. It's a mural that was painted outside of the building where I spent a number of years teach who in a one-to-one -one iPad classroom. And so my work, uh, with digital tool environment really began as part of a transition from a traditional public school in New York City um, to a school that became a magnet school. Um, so as part of that magnet transition, we were able to have access for one-to-one -one iPads pretty early on. So in 2011, um, pretty early on in this kind of one-to-one -one tablet thought process. And so it was really a you know, magical, wonderful event when the iPads arrived, um, but it didn't have place in the hands of students, but that there's so much more than we can do besides looking up a web browser or watching a video or, or some of the other pieces that we often talk about when we think about the way that students interact with devices um, during different parts of their day. And so, um, oh, it seems like the link might be a little funny uh, for EdChat, um, but I'll make I'll double check for that for you while we do a, a breakout and make sure that that uh, link is is up and working um, as we're kind of going through and, and all those pieces today. I'll, I'll double check on that one for you, um, but it should be up. Um, yeah, so if you it should be up now that um, slash EdChat. Um, if you go there, you'll see there's a Google form that should load um, down the page. And, and I'll make sure to check back on you all a little bit later um, to do that too. Um, so as we go through uh, today, I'll you know, continue to talk about this consumption and shifting to 
question, really in the context of the experience that I had as a classroom teacher. I've been out of the classroom for a few years now, uh, spending time in other people's classrooms. I'll be in, a, in some classrooms in Westchester, New York, uh, for the second half of this week, um, but also bouncing around, visiting lots of different schools schools and, and regional events, and writing and sharing about different ways to empower students as creators. So on the next slide, you'll see um, some of the ways that I like to share some of my favorites, of course, on my blog, Class Tech Tips, and on Twitter. But the next slide illustrates something that can be a little bit of a pain point or a, a thing to think about that I always like to start with because I am guilty of this. As we talk about this idea of tasks before apps and, and shifting into content creation, right? I am guilty of the listicle right? The favorite apps for this, the number one website, the must have resources. And so I'd like to start off by kind of leveling the playing field and admitting my guilt uh, towards loving these types of for us to start a conversation, to have a discussion about what it means to really thoughtfully integrate technology, which is what we'll talk about today. And so on the next slide, that first kind of core word to ground us, as we start thinking about content creation and using instruments, how can we make this meaningful? You know, so it counts. We really want to make sure that the choices that we make when we are bringing in digital tools into a classroom environment really elevate the learning experiences for students. And on the next slide, you'll see just two examples, movie making in action, where students are not making a film for the sake of movie making, right? That's not the learning goal for students, right? But we want students to be able to tell a story, to produce something, the information that they've collected from a close reading of a text or a novel study. So we really want to make the moments that we um, choose count uh, for when we're bringing in digital tools to elevate and energize the learning experience. The next key word is sustainable. I want to make sure that this practice of bringing in digital tools into the classroom uh, lasts, right? What can we do so that this is happening, not just in one moment of the school year or once a month, um, but that we are bringing in on a regular basis uh, digital tools for a sustainable goals that we've set across the school year, across content areas, and across even different units of study. And so as we think about these pieces, and on the next slide, you'll see some of the you know, web-based tools that students might use for digital portfolios or to publish their writing online. We also want this to be scalable too. Can we do this so everyone in your school does it too? And on the next slide, you'll see my big keyword scalable, which is always what I like us to shift into when we start thinking about these big ideas and then those ready for tomorrow tips too. What can we do of digital tools as we shift from content uh, consumption to content creation, right, really spreads across a school outside of the four walls of a classroom that might be kind of the, the where this buzz is taking place. And on the next slide, you see a school that I've had the chance of go visit their district and their teacher, uh, Kelly Smith was kind enough to share these images um, with me as well, where we're shifting students from just having these moments where they are reading and viewing on a device to really empowering them as content creators. And you see a student here scanning so that their age. And on the next slide, before we jump into our questions and chat a bit together, is really when I think about any of our open-ended creation tools, I love to circle back to a, a buzzword <laughs> that we used to use more often than we do now, which is this idea of digital storytelling, right? Our once upon a time, who, what, when type of stories. But the moments that we're able to use creation tools for students to capture their thinking one is better, one is terrible, one is worse, one is just all right. And as we talk today about this shift from content consumption to creation, I think it's really important to pause and acknowledge the power of the digital devices students have access to, to consume content, things like never before. 
before. They can feel like never before. We've all gone to YouTube to solve a problem, whether it's because our toilet's making a funny noise or like me, if I had the otter box stuck on my iPad and I can't get it off, right? I go there to find the tutorial, right? So we are consuming content all the time and we want our students to consume content smart manner. And so as we talk about content creation today, right, this idea that we can empower students as content consumers because we give them experiences creating content is really one of the pieces I hope you'll walk away from. When we turn students into creators, when we let them be the writers, the movie makers, the podcasters, it helps them really as well. And it's an important part of this shift to empowering students because it becomes this circle of really making them stronger and smarter consumers of content as well. So on the next slide, first question for breaking out into discussion today, right? Why do we want students creating and not just watching and listening to content? So as you think about this question and, and what you can contribute to the discussion, right? What is it that you want a students to be making and, and why do you want them to be creators and not just the, the viewers or listeners of content they might come across? Yep. So this is the time to click on the avatar of another person and, uh, and talk to them about, uh, you know, the question is, why do we want? But, the, you know, part of it is, is do we want students creating and not just watching and listening? So if you have an opinion and make your make your feelings known, I'll click on the avatar of at least one other person and uh, pair up and uh, talk about your thoughts. I'm going to come down. I'll bring Monica down and she can possibly join some of the groups and we'll give you a few minutes to talk about this. OK, I see a lot of you got had a chance to discuss and let's bring Monica back up. So, Monica, did you have a chance to talk about this with with some some of the people who were attending? Yeah, Robin from Boston and I were chatting a little bit about uh, the importance of giving kids an opportunity to apply what they've learned, right? To really give them the opportunity, not just to regurgitate was I think her word that she used, right? Mm -hmm. On a test or on that type of piece, but to really give them a chance to uh, create something in a, a real world content. I, you know, I don't know. I think that having kids perfectly fill in the dots and the multiple choice tests, I think that's probably as much creativity as we should allow them, right? Oh my gosh, right. It hurts my heart when I think about <laughs> right. um, the time that we we ded dedicate to those sort of. Yeah. So, um, so this this time also, so you, you've had some conversations with some other people. Who wants to talk about some of your ideas with Monica? Just uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll bring you up. And maybe you have some examples of, uh, you know, students uh, who have or have not um, and who have or have, haven't listened to content. It's, it's still coming up here and having a conversation. So, um so click on the raise hand button uh, underneath your avatar if you're willing to come on up. Oh, come on, you're all teachers. You do the, you ask classes. Okay, here we have one. Okay, uh, Kyle. So uh, let me bring Kyle up and I'll pull myself down also. Uh, so he's coming up in a new thing and I'm gonna pull myself down. It looks like there's no hands right now, so we can kind of jump back into some of these pieces. Um, and on the next slide, um, it's really where we're thinking about some of the big ideas for content creation. It really is about right, what we want students right, doing, talking about, being hands-on, right? not with their headphones on, staring at a screen, <laughs> um, but that they're making and being able to run that way. So on the next slide is my big, uh, my gut check is what I often call it, which is that idea of tasks before apps, right? What are we doing um, in order to make sure that we're putting the learning first, right? We really want to focus in on the learning goals for students and then design and develop activities that support that too. So on the next slide is my tasks before apps mindset, and it's, um, the leading questions that I go through in, in my book with ASCD, and I'll be talking about FETC as, as well, is what are we doing to make sure that we are putting that learning first, that we have our tasks before the apps, that we're not hung up on the shiniest or the brightest digital tools, but that we're focused on the 
the bills for students. So right at the end of today's lesson, right, what should students understand, right, our learning goals? How will I know for sure if students understand, right, what are the expectations, the success criteria we've set for students? What would I like students to accomplish today? So what are the learning activities, right? This is all kind of part of this idea of shifting kids from that sit back and listen and consume content to being part of a hands-on and creation of content too. On the next slide is the three C's that I focus in when I'm talking about, which is creation, collaboration, and honoring student curiosity. So what are we doing to provide opportunities for students as creators across the content areas? How are we giving them an opportunity to collaborate? We'll talk about some different types of collaboration as well. And then of course, what are we doing to make sure that Honoring their curiosity about, that they want to know more about. And one of my most important questions, right, is to think about, you know, and we're all guilty of this, where we don't know what we don't know. And how can we put students in situations where they can know what new things also get them going on that deep dive, right? We might do it um, when we're watching a movie and we says this actor or actress been in or how old are they, right? And we go on those Wikipedia deep dives because we're just curious to find out the answer and one question leads to another. And so what can we do within the content areas to lead it to make that happen? So in the next slide, I talk about this idea of lessons versus units right throughout my, my TASA for Apps book. Um, but when we're talking today about the shift from content consumption to content creation, we really want to think about all the purpose to integrate digital tools into the learning activity activities that we've designed for students. And so this might mean that we are choosing moments to embed creation opportunities within an individual lesson. So being really strategic where we want students to use their voice to create something, to capture images or media to make something. And then of course, right, shifting from what might feel more traditional, like say a five paragraph essay students might write to thinking of ways we can energize that and elevate those by letting students choose, curate, capture media that helps explain their thinking and to produce something they can share with others. And so when we think about this piece, it is thinking about this big and small, right? Those everyday moments, those one-offs every once in a while to more big ideas for our goal. For the next slide is a, a figure that goes over some of these ideas of embedding technology into a unit where we have a long-term goal, right? We want students to make a product that demonstrates their under using different types of off their understanding of different learning goals. But we also appreciate that the one-on-one -on -one individual moments that might pop into our unit plan, right, are where we can push in tech-rich experiences and have students be creators in, in smaller doses, if you will. Okay. So let me bring Monica back up. I see she was in a a, a conversation, but um, sorry about you, you, this, you all. I'm going to break off your conversation, and here, here she is. So, so one of the interesting things, you know, as, as I'm looking at this question, I very often get questions from teachers that, you know, I'm teaching pre-algebra or I'm teaching algebra, and um, it seems hard to have creating built into subjects like that. What are some things that people do in those areas? Gosh, that's a great question. And it's been really at the front of my mind because I'm working with a wonderful school right now where we, um, I love Spark Video. I love the Spark tools. They're free, <laughs> easy to use, talk about them all the time. <laughs> um, but we were, I'm working with a, a school right now and their middle school math teacher. Um, and so you have to forgive me a little bit with all the different math categories. So I'm not sure if literal equations fit into algebra. I think they might be, they may count as algebra. And so their students made these wonderful talk about teach me something, right? These wonderful screencasts on their iPad of them solving the problems. Um, and then they brought that 
movie clip that they made without any narration into Spark video. And then they narrated this beautiful video with like the steps that they took to solve the problem. It was just fantastic. So of mm-hmm. course, you know, the kind of Khan Academy, like what are you seeing other people do as creators in a math space, right? So this was kind of Khan Academy-esque for tutorials, which is really wonderful. Um, but even pushing students into situations where they're applying different mathematical uh, studies in a PBL environment, right? Or, or capturing mm-hmm. that and then going through their journaling of, of what worked and what didn't work and how they had to change something is all, you know, the way we can think about what people in a math field are creating um, outside of classrooms too. I know um, Heather and Joel and I were talking a little bit more with uh, ELA Bend, um, but there's mm-hmm. so many ways to think about students as, as creators. Well, and I think, um, and just as you were talking, it just reminded me, uh, there's this one rapper now, and there's no reason why it can't be, you know, any student is writing rap songs about math. So you could mm-hmm. conceivably um, oh, yeah. write a math song about, so, you know, uh, how do you balance an equation? or, or, or A or, podcast so, interview with someone, right? right. So many yeah. things. This time, there's there's a tear. Uh, you you saw how much fun it was talking to each other. It's just as much fun c- coming up on stage. So, uh, click on the raise hand button and um and and let's let's hear some of your ideas of some of the things that you've done with your students or some of your questions about what you could do with your students. Um, oh come on. Um, <laughs> Ah, okay, good. We have we ha- we have an interred soul. Let me bring uh, Stacy up here, and uh, and I'll bring myself down, and uh, you can ask for other volunteers at, after Stacy too. Great. So here, hi. Yeah, I can hear you. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, I was just talking to Kyle, and I was telling him that when I started going to the level where I was teaching my G to and getting them to incorporate technology, I, I would feature a technology for about a week, like if it was Nearpod or if it was mm-hmm. smart notebook files, or even if it was something simple as PowerPoint, I would feature technology and then they would get in a I knew they felt present through that technology. And that's how I started getting my students comfortable with actually using technology themselves. That's great to have um, kind of some spotlight tools, depending on your age level, of course, right? There might be opportunities for students to go off and kind of, you know, fi- find it yourself. If you want to, if you want to do a podcast, that's awesome. Them, right, but you need ins and outs of Garage Band and use some YouTube where you might have younger students where you could be one student who spent some time during a, a free period or pull out learning how to use a tool and like book creator and then coming to the group. And so I would think of it with those ask three before me type of strategy where you you know, encourage students to lean on their peers for support. You, that might even be part of the introducing different creation tools into different um, technology too. So thank you this so much for sharing grade. that. I think, oh, fifth grade, wonderful. Uh, um, Lisa is up next here. Hi, Lisa, how are you doing? I'm great, and how are you tonight? Good, thanks, thanks for, for joining me. us. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about this. Sure. So um, can you hear or hear and see or just hear me? Um, Both. Your volume is a little low, but I can hear you. Um, I love using Book Creator. I've learned a lot from you, Monica, on that. Um, But I have really enjoyed getting into providing hyperdocs for my students within Mm -hmm. our Google suite of tools. And it has allowed us to sort of go through from an explore stage of maybe exploring outer space links for second grade to then then moving into creating a Google drawing that um, showcases the planets in the right order. And then moving into a, a writing assignment where they have some choices as to what they would like to write about. Maybe an imaginary trip to outer space, but they would apply mm-hmm. some knowledge of some planets and what they had learned. Um, but they everything is, all their links are housed in the HyperDoc. And then I show how to do the Google 
um, will draw showcase it for about you know a, a week or so, and then they they get the hang of it. Um, and so I just wanted to share that hyperdocs have been experience in terms of, of of providing a structured way to let kids explore various content links. Um, and then even I'm in North Carolina, so. Um, one of the events around the Boston Tea Party time, we had our own tea party in North Carolina called the Edenton Tea Party, where some women got together um, on the coast of North Carolina and, and had their own tea party where they burned um, the king's tea um, and said they wouldn't drink it. And I think their, one of their husbands worked for the, the, the king. So that was a, a what the variety of choices in the hyperdoc. They can, um, I had found some uh, Google templates for like a, a people magazine sort of thing. I don't mm -hmm. know if you all have seen that, but they begin to like create a magazine of North Carolina and they also go on a field trip to Raleigh um, and spend the day in four different places in Raleigh on um, the legislative building and some museums. Um, and then they, they add to that. So it's an ongoing document. Um, and so they add this about the Edenton Tea Party and then some history of North Carolina. And then they've also studied a state symbol. So they kind of are, are sharing it in sort of a magazine format. Um, but again, that's all been sort of, I've, I've put the links to those templates within my hyperdoc. And so it's organized it well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that piece. And what you mentioned about, you know, student choice, right? Giving them some different mm -hmm. opportunities yes. and different ways and, and to show what they know, but also connect that to what they're interested in learning a little bit more about right. uh, is wonderful. And it's exciting. I'm glad to hear that um, book creators, one that you gravitated, um, how that's now Chrome, everyone's mm -hmm. so many more options, but the HyperDocs is very popular and is exciting to to see how you're sorry, how to bring in the, the Google suite of, of apps into their classroom. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And then the other person said something that I also wanted to go on. Um, I've involved myself with the Global Read Aloud the past November and November that Pernil Rip began. And, and mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. year it was um, Folk and Mem Fox's book. Books. The, the first week or so, I we did something in pit collage about Australian animals. Nice. Um, and then from then on, they were able to have that in their pocket to be able to say, well, if I want to make a pit collage about a book in a response, I can. And then what they really fell in love with, the second graders, was the um, Chatter Picks app on the iPad. Yes. So they mm -hmm. would um, draw a picture in a drawing app, take a screenshot of it, and then um, upload it into Chatter Picks. Um, which was a, a nice quick thing to do. And then they loved recording their voice as they maybe retold the story or they reacted um, to something that had happened in the story. And um, I thought that was nice. And, and one thing that I wanted to do that I didn't really get done was someone had put online, I'm sorry, I can't give the author's name of this, but they had had some emojis in terms of how you, a, a digital response nice how to respond and not put someone down um and so right. i thought that was a really great way to model digital mm -hmm. citizenship by taking what they had created and then saying well look we all we all pick or pick collage so now let's look at it and um kind of respond in a positive way you know like a thumbs up way or drop mm -hmm. the mic it was either one or you know it was some levels in between and so um and now what I'm excited about is they have these two apps so that they can use them in future projects, um, you know, with other books and um, moving on into some green screen, um, hopefully some Lego green screen uh, retellings of some stories. I'm, I'm just excited that we are now sort of progressing and have a lot of different strategies to use. Um, you know, it's not just that we rely on the one. Right. And then that's so, and that's so important, especially as we talk about this content creation piece, right? That tasks before apps, right? What are we doing to make sure that students are build transferable? So whatever yeah. tomorrow's tool is that we just can't even imagine right. what it looks like, you know, they right. have that experience and button, but knowing what it means to capture their voice, what they know and to create something that's really shareable online. So those are all such important things to highlight. So I appreciate you bringing that up as well. 
Yep. So thank you. So we'll jump back in just as we're kind of going through these pieces. I love to kind of have this like light bulb. Let's pause. Let's think for a moment. We want students to to be making, to be creating right over the course of, of all this time uh, together. And on the next slide, you'll see that, you know, the how can, right? So how can uh, digital tools uh, really elevate, energize, and then level the playing field? So as we talk about content today, we'll take students to new audiences, doing something they just couldn't do before. You know, they energize by creating some relevancy um, to something too. And then of course, you know, they let us you know, learn level the playing field. As well. And so this is all part of, of really being strategic and thoughtful about content um, opportunities. And who wants to share, Mitch, if you want to go ahead, Joanne, jump in, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, so I know just hearing a little bit about the global uh, read aloud, um, read aloud. Um, maybe if you have some resources, if anyone's participated in that before, you know, jumping into that text chat um, would be great too. Um, that way, if you do have a couple of good links or favorites or different books, um, that might be a, a good place too to make sure Joanne has some resources to jump in and get started. So just when I thought that all these kids are 21st century kids, <laughs> all I need to do Tell them the idea and do it, right? So I tried it with many different tools. Uh, interestingly, some will really jump in and figure everything out in five minutes. Uh, some do need to be out. Uh, we did another assessment today is looking for a place uh, in Chinatown and say, give me a direction from where our school is uh, to Chinatown by public transit. So amazingly, mm -hmm. I thought it was a very, uh, mm -hmm. but very interesting. From school to will be two. No, he actually. Mm -hmm. be surprised by one or two of these exceptions that these need to do. What you right, mentioned right, there to is, is really to, uh, because we really want to make sure that we don't take for granted some of the experiences that some students have and some students might not have. And, and you hear a lot of pushback now with that idea of, you know, digital natives, right? Yes, you might be able to hand an iPad to a three-year-old and they can find what they're looking for on Netflix and it, you know, makes us, you know, go wild at that possibility. But does that really mean that um, one, every four or five-year-old can do that? No, access, right? But then when they become 10 and 11 and 15-year-olds, if they haven't had experience using these familiar digital tools in a learn case set or not just we may not know to put them into into practice. So such a great point, and I really appreciate you sharing that story, Joanne, as well. Well, we're just going to jump ahead to thinking about kind of this next big question, um, and I'll make sure to, to send out some graphic organizers and things and, and pieces to you, too, that I know will be supportive. Right? But when we're thinking today about this idea of creation, and I always bring it back to this idea of that tasks before apps, like what are we going to do, um, no matter what the tool might be? What are some of your goals, whether you're halfway through the school year or you're starting off a new school year in January? Uh, what are some of your goals for placing tasks before apps this school year? And we'll jump into a quick convo about that. You're more than welcome to answer in the text um, chat too. Um, and that way we can kind of see some of those, those questions pop up. And I know I just pulled up the text chat here for the room. So if there's things that you're thinking of that are kind of your goals or your, your big things you want to do to really push students as creators in the upcoming school year, this is definitely the place to, to type them in and I'll for that. Mm 
we can get somebody to uh, click come up, talk about some some of their goals. Um, so, so what are what are your? I mean, you you're actually not as much in the classroom anymore because you're you're teaching, but but um, what what would be your goals if you were if you were teaching right now? Do you think? Well, one of the things that I think a lot about, and you know, I'll be in doing demo lessons the next two days in classrooms uh, in New York. You know, one of the things I I want to make sure I'm always putting kind of front and center is what are students doing that's going to show me what they know that's going to get them talking uh, to one another and recording their voice on the screen. So I've been thinking a lot about what I can do to model and, and to just be stronger when it comes to honoring student voice um, as part of that creation process, that actually having them record and talk and practice and chat and preparation for that too. And, and a lot of the conversations that we've been having tonight have been about creation as a way of demonstrating knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. But you could also use creation as a way of learning. So, you know, what are some of the, so if your goal, if, you're, if your task is, I want the student to learn, uh, let's say it's, um, I don't know, um, uh, something in physics like uh, leverage. Okay. Um, how do you, what, how would you, task that like that language arts principle rather you know not that one is better than the other it's just a different different thought process I think right and I think um, and coming back to that idea of voice and thinking about different ways to make that happen you know where you're your sound trap or you're using a tool like GarageBand and you're having students create a podcast where they're kind of of these ideas out, you know, is a way to, in the midst of our understanding, really capture that and create something that then, um, of course, you know, shows what they know as they're working towards that final piece, but gives them something really tangible, even if it's digitally mm -hmm. <laughs> tangible to, to make this it as well. Interesting. So we're, I know we're heading towards the uh, the hour where, where we end. I'm really hoping that one more person mm -hmm. will click on the raise hand button and we can have one more talk about uh, what your goals might be or to, to discuss what what goal what what goals maybe they should be thinking of um, of placing tasks before apps this school year. Just one more person clicking on the raise hand button. Don't make me get, ah, uh, I was, don't like make me, but uh, <laughs> thank you memories. And uh, let me bring you up and I'll bring myself down. they've got and what they know and move it that extra step forward so tasks before ops is always my goal my saying tool not a toy mm -hmm. and so that's a very common saying that I use with the teachers and the students and so because it's a tool we try and use it like a tool and because we're using it as a tool we're not necessarily focused on the app we're focused on what we can do with the tool uh, we're quite lucky i'm in northern alberta in canada we've got a lot of chromebooks um, a lot of one-to-one -one chromebooks and so you no know, push we've got grade two classes that are doing screencastify and doing book reviews um, in the awesome. google suite so they take a picture of their book using the built-in camera. They find the book review. They post both of those together and through Google. The creation is just uh, to see these kids' educational activities where they're creating and they don't really care about the fact that it's screencastify and google slides they right, care about right. mm -hmm. their book review 
right? When you, um, I think when you just make it that engaging, it's just that much easier. And because most of them have great access to the tech, it makes it so much easier because we're not hauling them down to the lab and there's no mm -hmm. webcam. And it just, it's so much easier. And some teachers aren't, aren't there yet and you work with them where they are. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm lucky like you, I get to go in and mentor all the time. So if I have a teacher who's struggling or doesn't want to try, I just take over the class and do it. I was a classroom teacher for 19 okay. years. It doesn't scare me. So it doesn't matter the grade, the subject, take over and go for it and show them what can be done. And then once the okay. kids know it, the kids just go. So and and that's very similar to my experiences now where you know I, I visit schools and especially the ones that I have long term placements and relationships with, you know, I do that. Well, next time I come, I'll I can do it if you want. <laughs> like if you're if you're hesitant, if you're not sure what it's going to look like, like nothing would make me happier than to lead your kindergartners in a virtual reality exploration of animal habitats. Right. <laughs> or or those kind of. You know, or, experience and and just your perspective on this too and so um, as we're kind of thinking about um, you know of course wrapping up for this evening um, make sure to head over to the, that class Tom slash chat um, is I'll make sure that um, after today everyone who's on live and and give you some extra resources and some pieces too um, but we'll also do that that book raffle and I'll, I'll email you all whoever the special winner is <laughs> so that you can get your your task before apps copy um, too well and 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 thank you I just um, you know just which is like, mm -hmm. to me, like the, the number one was begin with the end in mind, you know, and it's the same thing. And it, it's the same thing in life. It's the same thing with being Seth Jane. I, you know, you, you think of what your end result is and then you work back from there. Okay. Here's, here's what I need to accomplish and here's the tools that I can use. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that, that's one of the big lessons. If there was, that's in addition to tasks before apps, if there was one, other thing that you what would that one thing be i think the one thing would be is to you know maybe it's someone here maybe it's someone in your building but find i like to call it your partner in tech not your partner in crime right but maybe it feels like that way sometimes but right who's your person going to be right maybe it's that person holding you accountable to try something new for you to share about an obstacle or something that happened um, or to bounce off a new idea with but find someone virtually um, through a twitter chat through events like this or someone a little closer to home um, that you can can join them journey with and uh, I think that'll it'll really make a difference as you're thinking through new things to have someone to bounce ideas off of too well thank you and I'll, I'll see you in Orlando in in yeah. I guess mm -hmm. just about a, just a little bit over a month right January 23rd January. I know. It's, it's coming up quickly um, so and I, I hope mm -hmm. you have a very very happy holiday season uh, with thank lots you. of family. You all as well Thank you. And don't forget to go to uh, Monica's website, classtechtips.com. It's um, in, in addition to the EdChat hash, EdChat uh, folder, uh, there are you in there. And um, if you can, uh, bring Monica to your school because uh, she really can help a whole school make a make a big difference. So, Monica, I'll, I'll see Thank you next you. year. Yeah, okay. see you next year. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and thank you, everybody. This is Mitch Weisberg signing off for EdChat and Interactive. I hope that a number of you can make it tomorrow night. Uh, it should be really interesting. Come back to our website, edchatinteractive.org, and register for tomorrow. And we have some uh, up for next year as well. Uh, see some of you to the rest of you. Have a very, very happy holiday, and hope to see you soon. Good night.